don't understand. Why did this have to happen to me? I feel like I just can't make sense of things. I need answers. Where is God? Relationships, relationships, relationships. I don't know if it would be possible to do a program of questions that young people ask most without covering that topic. Welcome to Raw Questions Relevant Answers. And this is a program where we look at the common questions that you as young people have been sending in uh, to be answered. My name is Michelle Dukamis. I'm here with my co-hosts, Dee Casper and Mark Payton. We are the relationship experts. Okay, wait, we're actually not. <laughs> but we are going to try to look at your questions biblically and do our best with the help of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to go to our first question today. This question was sent in from a 26-year-old female. Is there such a thing as too many rules and overthinking a relationship? Ooh. What do you think? Yeah, I mean... I would say yes and no, but I'll let yeah, Mark answer yeah. first. <laughs> I think there's... Okay, there's two sides to this. Where this question, I think, is coming from is that there has been a movement to add in more rules and thinking into relationships because as a on a general note in society you know we don't have a lot you know hook up with somebody for a weekend and then you know it, it's just in many ways uh, dating now is very lucid yes it, it it doesn't have the commitment and the beauty and the the principles that are characterized in the word of god um However, sometimes what I think can end up happening is that those of us who have grown up in it and who have had a lot of emphasis placed on relationship rules and dating can sometimes get into this mode where you start to overthink everything. And so instead of thinking in a normal way, you can easily overthink it. Um, honestly, I think the answer of the question is yes and no. Yeah. Like, but the determinant factor is you, right? Because you can overthink it, but you can also underthink it. The key, I believe, is to really seek God in his word and other spiritual counsel. Yeah, God doesn't want us to have analysis paralysis in this <laughs> selection of our future spouse. I mean, there are, uh, we believe that there are biblical principles that we can work with that kind of understand that the purpose of relationships is marriage. Uh, not just to do what thou wilt and hope for the best. There's, there should be some intentionality here, but in order to kind of teach or to kind of open that discourse, there have been some who've laid out principles that are kind of going beyond. It's kind of like what the Pharisees and Sadducees did. They had like 37 laws for the Sabbath that you can't find in the Bible. Yeah. Um, if you spit on the ground, you're plowing the soil. If you untie your shoe or do a finishing stroke, and the intentions were good. We definitely don't want to break the Sabbath. Let's just ensure that no one does. Mm. And this can at times put us in situations where there's so much fear of doing the wrong thing that we don't know how to do anything. Mm. And so I can resonate to some degree with that thought process of, it seems like it's a little too much to some degree. So how do we go about this process of like meeting and going forward? But their question was, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. But it's also possible for us to be so self Mm. confident in our ability to recognize a situation without receiving godly counsel, mm. Mm -hmm. without talking to our parents, without talking to their parents, right? Mm -hmm. Some of these mm. godly principles that are in scripture, that when we do that, we end up in situations that we regret later and wish that someone would have told us. Yeah. And those principles yeah. were there to protect us from that situation. And you know, <laughs> on, sorry, go ahead, Mark, go ahead. <laughs> on that too, we do really have to think about the solemnity, the solemnity of this decision. Yeah. I mean, you don't really want to have divorce as an option. I mean, that messes up a lot of people's lives. Think about your kids, right? Yeah. Um, and so going into this, you're really making a decision for life. Mm -hmm. that's, that's God's way. And, and, and when, when you think of it in that context, I mean, when you're looking to buy, well, okay, in my case, I may be looking to buy a camera. I'll have that camera for three years, right? Maybe four. Um, after that, it doesn't matter. I can get a better one. But with a wife, that's a little bit different, you know? 
And this is really huge. It's the idea that relationships are, are sacred, are special. Mm. I read once how whenever we step into someone's life, it's like we're stepping on sacred ground. Mm. And if you're working towards a more intimate relationship, like a romantic relationship and leading towards mm -hmm. marriage, think about the sacredness of that. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's often easy to think about a lot of rules because it's hard for us to understand the principles. Mm -hmm. But God is a God of principles, that he likes to give us a picture that we're following. For instance, the intentionality is huge. I've had someone tell me before how, you know, hey, a relationship or a courtship is successful as long as you decide whether or not you and that person should get married. Yes. Well, Amen yes, to that. but I disagree. Really? <laughs> to some degree I do, but go ahead. I agree and disagree. I agree, but yet at the same time, how do we do the relationship? Are not all relationships meant to teach us more about how to love people, mm -hmm. how to treat people like Christ? They're all a growing experience. Mm -hmm. And if we're not doing a relationship in that way, we can have an ungodly relationship, even if it is solving the issue of whether we get married or not. Yeah. So how do we go into it? Do we go into it with that respect, mm -hmm. with that mm -hmm. object of treating the other person as yeah. Christ would treat them? Yeah. Are we looking at how we deal with people's hearts? Yeah. We're holistic beings, mental, emotional, physical. Many yeah. relationships get out of whack in one of those areas. Either the physical is way ahead of the other two or mm -hmm. some imbalance that can lead to hurting hearts. And so mm -hmm. I would encourage, yeah, there can be too many rules, but in order to not focus on rules, hey, do some research about the mm -hmm. principles God had for what relationship means, mm -hmm. what it's for, and that can really lead us to treat it in a very special way. Yeah. I, just in the context of my amen, <laughs> um, this is one of the biggest reasons why people are so discouraged by all these rules and regulations they get thrown in their direction is they feel that the only reason they can even consider starting a relationship to some degree is how mm -hmm. they feel, whether that's what's actually being taught or not. How they feel is, I can't even date this person if I know I'm going to marry them or you know, go through the process of getting to know them. And the problem is there's so much pressure on them yeah. that when the relationship falls apart, they start questioning everything they've ever known. Do I even know how to hear from God? What, is everything about this wrong? And there's this yoke that comes from a, a failure of sorts that they don't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. And the point that one of the lessons you learned through this process was there wasn't a fitness for marriage. And it's better to learn that now than later. Yeah. But you went into this with intentionality to see if you were fit for marriage. Um, I think there's both sides of this principle. And I really like what you brought out on your point, uh, which I think is super, super important that isn't talked about near as much. Mm -hmm. We have another question here. This is coming from another female who is asking, as a young single female, I don't date, but I want to be a wife and helpmate to a godly man who works for the Lord in these last days. Is prayer my only option in this case? I know it sounds awful to say because prayer is always the best option, but is there anything else I can or should be doing? Mm. I'm sitting here on a panel with two men. We have a, <laughs> so I guess I'll, I'll interject and then you guys can help out this question too. As another young single female, I, I hear you. I understand how that is that often we wonder, uh, what, what do we do? How do we wait? You know, some principles that I have seen is in Luke 16, 10, Jesus says, he who's faithful and little mm -hmm. will may, be made mm -hmm. ruler over much. Mm -hmm. um, if we are not given a relationship or a help meet a husband at this time, maybe consider what are we doing with what God's given us? Are we mm. being faithful with the task, with the relationships mm. that God has now? Those are the things that prepare us. I've seen this in my life. God puts friends, mm. God puts ministries, God puts opportunities in my life that shape me and shape my character. Mm. As I look back, those are things that are going to affect how I am with my future husband. Yeah. Am I making good use of that? The other thing is uh, 1 Corinthians 7.34, Paul talks about how you know, married women look for the things of their husband, single women get to focus on the things of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Paul even goes so far to say, hey, maybe it's better to be single mm -hmm. in some cases. But regardless of how long you'll be single, 
are we taking advantage of the time that we're single? Mm -hmm. It is a time when we can focus on the Lord, when we can do growth in certain areas that we may not be able to focus on as much, when we have a family, when we have mm -hmm. those God-given obligations. Mm -hmm. And so maybe some faithfulness in those things now can be mm -hmm. of help. I was just, I was just <laughs> briefly say that it's a, it's a prime time to search our own hearts and mm -hmm. to see where we're broken. Any mm -hmm. issues we may have from residual upbringing, whether it be from our parents, mm -hmm. if you grew up in a divorced home like I did or something else, any insecurities you have, any tendencies or um, you know, shortcomings you see in your personality that cause problems in interpersonal relationships, this is the best time mm -hmm. to search your heart, to find counseling, to find healing, to ensure that whenever that time does come from a relationship, there's less you're bringing into that that you're gonna mm -hmm. have to deal with later. Mm -hmm. It's far better to deal with those issues now than in the midst of a situation of merging two lives mm -hmm. together. You know, one other thing too that I would say to that, part of the question is, is there anything I can be doing in the meantime? Um, it kind of, it seems like with the implication, like, am I just supposed to wait and sit and pray? And like, is this all I can do? I, I think one of the beautiful things about the gospel is that there is a certain, while we can't do anything to atone for ourselves, while we can't, there's no such thing as creature merit. It doesn't do anything. Um, there is an aspect in which in day-to-day -day life, God does expect us to do things. God doesn't ask us to just sit here on the planet and pray and ask him to do every single little thing for us. He, right. he says, get up, go out, take the gospel to the world. It, we aren't the ones who who bring the increase, but we plant the seed, we water the seed, right? And, and I think it, it goes, the same principle um, applies in this situation, you know? When you're waiting on God in this and praying and, and, and asking Him to bring the right person to you, you have something to do in going out and meeting people, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can go and, and get to know other people. I mean, you're, you're not, God isn't gonna just magically bring the perfect husband to you just riding on a pelican or something, right? He could. He but. could. <laughs> he probably won't though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, just go out there, like get to know people, um, invest in, 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 relation, in relationships with people that are like-minded, talk to with them, get to know them. And find out where God is leading you in life and yeah. pursue that with every ounce of your being. Mm. And if this person isn't moving in the same direction that God is leading you, then it's probably not going to work. And this is why it is important for us. You know, Adam and Eve both had time alone with God before God brought them together to know who they were and where they were going. And I think it's an important and helpful principle that who are you, where are you going? And if that's not in harmony, that helps you to know whether you're moving mm. in the same direction mm -hmm. or not. So take advantage of that time to find out who you are. Mm. Right. Where he'd have you go. You know, I've heard it like this. Look at how much is a person like me? Is that compatible? Do mm. we do we mesh? But how much is this person like God? Yes, mm -hmm. that's a bigger thing. And mm. where are we going? Mm -hmm. It's counsel about: Is this person going to expand your sphere of influence, yeah. your usefulness in this life? Yeah. And part of it, like you all mentioned, is maybe God's wanting us to learn more about His call for our lives first. Yeah. How do we know if we're going in the same direction as yeah. someone if we haven't asked God about our direction? Yeah. I want to read this really quick. This is some, these are some words of wisdom that I heard. If the app, and this is talking, this is speaking to a young man in regards to a relationship he's currently pursuing. If the atmosphere surrounding her is the most agreeable to you, if she meets your standard for a wife to stand at the head of your family, if in your calm judgment taken in the light given you of God, her example would be worthy of imitation, you may as well marry her. So basically, if, if they're really agreeable to you, if they meet your standards to be a, your wife, and if they are living in, if they're, if they're, if they're worthy to imitate, mm -hmm. then that's somebody that is, you can feel comfortable with. We become like those that we are the closest to. Mm. So this is a big decision. I just mm. encourage each of you who are praying about godly relationships to continue praying but also prepare. Let mm. the Lord make you who he has called you to be, and then he will bring you someone that fits with that in his time. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.